my name is Alan Delery. I work for the Center for Restorative Approaches in New Orleans, uh, but I partner with Renew Accelerated High School, and I'm the team lead with the NIJ grant uh, with implementing uh, the school responder model. Well, as an outside partner or organization working with the school, I had been at Renew Accelerated High School for about the, going almost on the third year of implementing direct services when I found out that they were implementing the school responder model and I became a part of the team early on but not at the very beginning. Um, so because of the work that we do with restorative approaches and there's some elements of restorative approaches that are part of the school responder model, we thought it was a good fit uh, for me to get involved. So it kind of evolved from me being just the direct services uh, that I was providing to us having a team that's really looking at what are all of the elements that we could put in place. So the first step that we did was really receive the training that was given to us for us to be able to assess what the critical elements of implementation were. And we just started, after we received the training, I thought there was some outstanding um, tools being given to us on what's the next steps that you need to do. So there was structure given to us on what questions we need to answer so that we could fully implement this. So that was the next step. So once we've completed the implementation planning that first previous year, then we were able to kick it off this full school year. So we really had good time put in place to think of a plan and then implement it. So it wasn't a rushed process. I'm gonna look at two uh, biggest outcomes that I think we've had. And um, one is while I was, as I said before, I was providing direct services, they put a plan in place on um, um, instilling restorative approaches from a staff or whole school approach. So it was taken from just one person doing restorative circles of conversations to the whole school thinking of how do they have restorative conversations to really help deal with some issues that may have been going on in the school so that students are not just getting suspended, uh, but they're having an opportunity to figure out what's been going on and giving the students a chance for them with the teacher and other school staff involvement on coming up with a plan on how to make things better. I was really involved with the mental health side of what the issues are with the students, but we implemented the, uh, the screener. So we used the um, a universal screener to identify what students may need some needs without just waiting until we have an incident that's going on to find out what, that they had a problem. So the universal screener that we've put in place as a result of the school responder model has been um, really helpful and we've implemented that to help match students that may have slipped through the cracks. What we found after we did the screening, uh, we looked and matched that with students that may have already been receiving services and we found there were some students that we were able to add services to before waiting until something happened again. So those were, I think, the two big areas, that, uh, the universal screener being one. Um, and just getting the faculty more involved with the restorative approaches process. In terms of how CRA has been involved with, uh, and the whole team involved, been involved with dividing up tasks, uh, each of us had special roles that we knew our expertise. We have the school counselor that's on the team. You have the dean of culture, or you may say dean of students, uh, that's on the team. We had an administrator on the team. So we really looked at what each of our expertise was. So the counselor was the one who implemented the um, universal screener and she reported back. That wouldn't have been my expertise or my area. I was involved with restorative approaches so I was the one able to do trainings related to restorative approaches. With their assistance we worked together on professional development for implementing restorative approaches. But our administrator is the person who was providing the data for us so that when the implementation team did meet we had data that we were able to look at to help uh, assess how we were doing and what next steps might be. So again, each one of us had a particular role. Uh, our Dean of Students, or Dean of Culture, was able to kind of report out on what was going on in terms of behavior issues that were happening in the school and what steps he was taking and how that was going as we considered it being a part of the school responder model. So we each, it was easy for us to think of who might be the best person to be the lead on the activity or task that we came up with. When I first started with the school, it was me providing direct services so that if there was a conflict or a fight that took place, 
they referred it to me. Uh, but the transition that has happened and we're thinking about sustainability is that we trained or I trained through Center for Restorative Approaches, trained staff to be able to implement it. So now I am doing less direct service. Uh, I'm still available. If there was a case that they thought it was better to have an outside provider perceived as more neutral that would be able to do the restorative circle, then I would step in and can do circles like that. But it's less direct service now and more just helping with the implementation planning with the team. We did professional development and trained teachers. The, uh, the implementation team came up with some policies and procedures that teachers can put in place on when is something going to be handled in the classroom and how, what steps they would take uh, with incidents in the class and then when they would refer to the administrator to implement some type of intervention. Um, so that we provided the training for that and they're, so they're, we, the implementation team then looks at how we're doing with the implementation of the plan that we have put in place. But in terms of training of the staff, we, they actually put me on in, uh, on the professional development day and we just went through. Uh, after the team decided what elements of restorative approaches they wanted to implement or what they wanted to target, uh, then we put that on the agenda and I provided the training. We had an opportunity for teachers to give their feedback to, to kind of talk about how they might implement it or what their challenges were. Uh, so I'm stepping back a little bit on that. After we trained them, there was another PD to talk about implementation challenges that they may have been having and what we could have done differently. So then we had some conversations about that. So based on feedback that was received either from the teachers themselves or just observing on how things were being implemented and seeing challenges, modifications were made to the um, policies and procedures that we had in place so that it could truly be something that was being implemented and not just something that was put in the books. Uh, I've been in places where we've had written down procedures but nobody followed those procedures because they really didn't work well the way they were being put in place. So the team being able to assess how things were going and make those changes or modifications really made, I think made a difference on a plan that was going to be functional.